Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here for Cloud Infrastructure Services. In this video, we are looking to deploy SFTP server on Microsoft Azure. And the market link has been provided in the description. Let's go ahead and start deploying it. Let's click create. And we are going to configure our VM instance. Uh, let's just call it SFTP server. Region is fine, all defaults are perfectly fine. According to your needs, you can change the size, of course. This is more than enough for a demo. This is your Windows username and password. Gonna pick one, which you would need to log into to the server, so do remember it. And yeah, review and create. Validation passed. Let's go ahead and create it. Our deployment is in progress. It's going to create the VM and all the networking it requires by itself. Hence the use of deployment manager. This is great. So I'm going to skip until two until it is done. Our deployment is complete. We are going to go to the resource itself and view it. This is our instance running it. So we want to connect to it through RDP. And yeah, that's the password. Download the RDP file. Once it's downloaded, open it, connect to it. Now, here you want to enter the username and password you entered while creating the VM. Okay. Yes. and our Windows server starts up. Just give it a while to load. First thing you want to do is run this free FTP server. Okay, let me close this. As an administrator, make sure you're running it as an administrator. Right click it, run it as administrator. And there it is. Once you start, you can see the interface it's gui and what you want to do first is just a side note you can always click here to configure the settings okay so once it is open we can generate new we have to generate new sftp host keys so here you want to go to the host key as can be seen here And minimize it I think so it already provides you a path so you can keep this as it is instead of CFG let me just go for RSA So I'm going to create it in the same folder it is mentioned. Let it be private key.rsa. So yeah, that's the one. 
make sure it is 1024 bits same for the dsa key key we're going to generate one and 1024 bits that one too and yeah this is the folder private key dsa and that is that's it we're going to apply and save it Next, you want to do what you want to do is start the server itself. So we're going to click on SFTP, and all this is perfectly fine for 22 all interfaces. You can add something here. Welcome to SFTP server in Azure, for example. And goodbye message can be see ya. Uh, completely whatever you want. And that would be the root directory. That is fine. And just click on start. The server status is running. So if we go to status, the SFTP server, you would find that it is running. Great. Our next step would be adding users, and there are three options to do that. Either you authenticate your local users with username and password, or authenticate your Active Directory users. Next would be, or, or you could choose to authenticate users with private public SSH keys. For local users, we would go to the computer management. That's the one. Uh, and here, we can go to you local users and groups let me just stretch that users and here as you can see my users are already added so i'm just going to add user a demo user demo for connecting whatever password is whatever you want to set oh, how did i mess that up no need and yeah create okay i didn't think that would be the case Just let's create a strong password and done. So our demo user is created, but this is just created inside the local system. We still have to configure this to our stuff, our STP server. So we are going to go back here in here you go to users and add a user here the name should be same obviously authentication should be nt authentication domain no need and just make sure you check the sftp server and apply and this is configured with your sftp server so that's how you add a local user as uh, and if you want to add active directory users what you will be do is add another user add the username according to the ad whatever it is any user authentication would be anti-authentication itself and here you, you want to add your domain whatever it is so make sure that is added keep the home directory same and here make sure you check and uncheck s ftp server and only sftp server is checked apply and that's it your active directory user is added now if you want to authenticate with private or public keys via ssh 
So you have added the option to allow users to connect to the server using a private key that communicates with a public key on the SFTP server. So what you want to do is go to this, this user section and we are going to create another user. Uh, let's call him SSH user. In here, instead of NT authorization, what we're going to do is select password stored as SSH one hash. Now, password, make a note of this again. This is important. This is used as catchphrase. Match phrase, catch phrase, pink cobra, whatever. And yeah, keep this as it is. That's perfectly fine. Again, make sure you uncheck FTP server and only FTP, SFTP server is checked. Apply and user now can ssh into this so you will of course need to create a public key and a private key for each user so you have on your desktop putty gen that's what you're going to use and here let me just here make sure you have rsca selected then just press generate Once it is generated, uh, keep the key passphrase you have to enter. It has to be the same one we entered for the user. The password we entered for the user in the SSH. So it has to be same, otherwise it will fail. We are going to save the key. The public key in the server folder that we have been using all this time. So it's in our this PC Windows C our files fifty six. free FTPD and here make sure you save it with the same username you have added and it should not have any kind of extension so yeah this is the public key we are saving just remember that and save it and we have to save the private key this you can save it anywhere because this just goes to the user you will be connecting so this is the one you give to the user and this can have an extension right and save it we got that and yeah that's how <clears throat> that is configured i just want to point out that first time a user connects their home folder will be created in the following location Inside this folder, there will be another folder named as SFT root. SFTP root, yeah. So in that, you can, in case a user experiences any issues in going to that file of the user, folder of that user, you can edit it. So no, no user has connected, so I don't have it, but just assign it. Lastly, I want to point out, since we did create it from a deployment, so everything is configured for us, the networking bit, but if you are doing it some way and some from somewhere else, see the uh, network security group is created for us. So 
if you're doing it manually or you have to do it manually somewhere, you should be aware of the ports that all got automatically enabled for us because we were using deployment port 22 that is required for SFTP and point two one and point nine nine zero. So just a heads up, you don't have to configure it since we are using deployment, but something that you should be aware of. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.